So what I have here is a couple batteries that go to a set of Bosch hand tools that I have. And this battery works just fine. But when you put it in this battery, right, when you put this battery in this tool, you get nothing but the light. No motor. And the light's nice and bright. Now, granted, it is LED, but, you know, it's, it's fairly bright. So why is that? And this is a common problem with these newer lithium cells. And people will usually just throw them out at this point. Now, I did put this on charge, and it seemed to charge. Now, I don't know if that was just because it already had a voltage, or, a, or it was already charged, or if the uh, charger just dismissed anything and just charged it anyway, which, if it's what I think it is, it should not have charged. So that's kind of the question. But if you see, if the positive and negative terminals you know, get about 19.6 uh, volts, and it's an 18-volt battery, so with load it would be 18 volts. And this one was just charged, and it's uh, 20.35. So about the same. Now, these lithium packs are a lot different than the old-school NICAD packs. Now, these were great, and this one actually still works. It needs to be rebuilt. It's, it's uh, showing its age. But these basically just have batteries in them. And these pins just go to the batteries. With lithium cells, they actually have a controller in here for charging and for discharging. So if the voltage gets too low, it shuts off everything to the drill or whatever plugs into it to keep the, you know, the things from going thermonuclear and, and uh, A, just damaging the battery, or B, bursting into flames. So it could be something wrong with that controller board. However, there is something I have a, I have a feeling I know what it is, but we'll, we'll find out when we open it up. So let's open it up and just see what's going on. And as you'll notice, there are, you know, you have the positive and negative, and then you have a few other terminals. Now, I looked online. I could not find an actual pinout for, for the Bosch. But generally, um, there's a few things going on in there. One is, one could be it's telling the drill what voltage it is, what type of, what type of battery pack it is. Also, there's a thing in there called a thermistor. Now, if you're not familiar with, with what a thermistor is, it's essentially a little device. And actually, here's one right here. I already got it ready because I have a feeling that this is the problem. And when you heat it up, it generates a small bit of voltage. And when I say small, I do mean small. We're talking uh, millivolts here with almost no current behind it. And I'm going to pull this whole thing apart because I may actually just... I want to see what kind of cells are in this. And there's no screw in that one. Now, what it will do is it will monitor the temperature of the lithium cells. If they get too hot, it will prevent it from charging. It will also prevent it from being discharged. So if this is being used on a job site, heavily used, and the battery's getting a little too overworked, it'll shut off all power going out, or at least high loads. Now, there's a couple things that we see here. This looks like it goes to this little battery meter up front here, which, by the way, shows full. So let's take that out. Whenever you're working on any type of battery, especially any type of lithium battery, be very careful not to short circuit them. They don't like that kind of load and could potentially explode. Okay, so let's look at the circuitry. So what we have here is just the, the, the internal board. It's very basic. And this board here, which has a little controller on it, can't read what it says. Can't read any of the markings on it. But this is mostly for the front charge indicator and I would imagine it's also a charge controller because the positive feed runs straight to here runs through there and then comes back in on one of these lines so let's see what these other two pins do see if this one connects to this resistor here 
This resistor then jumps, well, it, the other side of the resistor is right there. If you look on this side here, you have the two resistors. This side connects to nothing but this other resistor, and then this resistor plug, you know, connects to this terminal right here. Well, that terminal we're not using in this drill. As you can see, we're not using that terminal in this drill. So what we're going to focus on are these two terminals. Now this one, this terminal jumps this resistor and it also goes up into the controller. This one here goes to the controller, but it also goes through this thermistor. Now a thermistor generates a little bit of voltage, but it also can act as essentially a variable uh, resistor. And let me, let me demonstrate. Right. So here I have the thermistor that came with this meter and it's designed and calibrated to use this to tell the temperature in the room. And it's about 73 degrees in this room. Now, if I go like this, there's my body temperature. If I let go, it's gonna go down. Now let's change it to resistance. All right, so now that it's in resistance, you have 14.2. I'm gonna heat it up and the resistance goes up. If I blow on it to cool it down, the resistance goes down. So that's what's happening here. No different. And if we have an open or a bad thermistor, that's going to cause this not to work because it's going to think that the batteries are either too cold or too hot. The first thing we're going to do is just check for resistance. I'm getting nothing. I am getting nothing at all. So there's no resistance whatsoever. It's just an open circuit. It's so it seems. So let's put this here just so we know it's a good connection. Let's try this just out of curiosity. Notice it's not really changing. So I believe we have a bad thermistor. So what I want to do is, like I said, I have this one here, and I'm going to take this one out and put this one in its place. Now, generally, when you want to do this, you want to use one that's calibrated about the same, about the same size. This one's slightly different. Um, I'm going to just roll with it. We'll see if we can get this operational. All right, so now that that's in, let's slap this in the drill and just see if we get anything. That's all there was. Now, while I put this battery pack back together, one thing I'll mention that I did not include in the video, and if you look very closely, you'll notice, is that I did extend the leads to the thermistor. Uh, this allows the thermistor to sit in its original place within the battery holder. All right, so now that it's back together, let's see if it works. And that's all there is. So rather than spending, you know, what is it, 
depending on the battery pack, $40 to $80 for a battery pack, depending on, like I said, your brand and where you get them. And if they're rebuilt or refurbished, uh, you know, a couple cent part can fix it up. If all you, you know, if you want to invest a little bit of your time, you can save, uh, save some money. So that's all there is to it. And uh, I'm going to see how these battery packs hold up. If they're not that bad or if they're not that great, um, I'm probably going to stick some new, some new cells in them and I'll do a video on how to do that. Uh, it's again, once again, it's not hard at all. And instead of, uh, again, spending, we'll say $50, just we'll keep it, keep it even. Um, instead of spending $50 for a, you know, a new battery pack, you can you know, spend five to 10 on cells and just put them in yourself and be done with it. So if you have, so if you have any, uh, questions, comments, or suggestions, again, leave them in the, uh, comments below and I will see you next time.